The Taekwondo knife hand strike has many different applications, not the least of which is, hold on Jordan, that's an actual knife. Ah! <laughs> hey, it's Ramsey Dewey and Jordan Chow, and we're here at the X. Extreme Fight Lab, because we're extreme scientists at this laboratory, hence the, the white lab coats. Wait, these aren't lab coats. They're Taekwondo uniforms. What is going on? We're supposed to be MMA guys. We're going to show you some Taekwondo grappling. Yeah, you heard me right. Now, if you're a little bit of a historian on the forms, you should know Taekwondo forms were derived from Shotokan forms. <gasps> and the more you study the forms and the more you know about grappling, wrestling specifically, the more you can start to see some connections. Movements like these, which are often called blocks, for example, if he grabs a wrist, we're using these to strip the grips or to arm bar if I'm feeling particularly nasty. One I figured out recently, the upward block. Man, this one confused me forever because, okay, why are we always pulling one hand down to the hip? For the very simple reason that this is counter pressure. But I thought like, okay, if he's really holding on, how am I gonna strip the grip that way? But look at the form. Here, let go for just a second. The form, we start by bringing the hands in very close in an X shape, and then we push one up and pull one down. So if he does have this and I pull in like that, the stripping the grip becomes much, much easier right there. And you'll notice I pull one hand in, as I follow up, so he grabs a wrist, pull it in, up, boom, okay? Counter pressure is what that is. But we didn't come here today just to talk, talk about blocks and punches. Let's talk about these knife hand strikes, which aren't actually strikes at all. Well, they sort of are, but not really. Okay, you've probably seen these movements in the forms, inside knife hand and outside knife hand. And in both instances, one hand comes down and one hand comes up. And have you ever seen this specific movement in a fight? Now, you've probably broken some boards or seen a demo where you do karate knife hands or seen Captain Kirk do this in Star Trek and it's a valid way to strike. It's fine. There are more effective ways to strike, but what if I told you it's not a strike? Okay, check this out. And we're gonna pay special emphasis to why one hand comes down here. Jordan, get your guard up, right? One hand here, one hand here, one elbow in here, what's that? It's a collar tie. Now, pay close attention to the elbow, not the hand, not the shape of the knife hand. It's the elbow that's the real key in this technique. Here, turn around this way. So if his guard is up and I just knife hand it, look, he's gonna block that every time while attempting to get that collar tie. I need to dig my elbow in through this space here. I don't know if you can see that. That is what's going to penetrate the guard and allow me to get the collar tie. And this is also a very important. When I grab a collar tie, I want to dig my elbow in anyway so I have maximum control. If I've got double collar ties, some people call it a Muay Thai clinch. If my elbows flare out like this, it's easy to escape and posture up. If I dig them in, now I've got a lot of control. Right? So elbow in right here, get the guard up. Boom. Notice it's essentially the same shape. One hand down here, one hand up here. But emphasis on where the elbows go. Boom, boom. Okay? How about this next move? Because these often work together in the forms. We have inside knife hand, and then we have an outside boom, boom, knife hand. What's that? How about a reverse collar tie? So his guard is up. I want to get in here. Boom, collar tie. Boom, reverse collar tie. What do we do with that? Well, all kinds of things. Pivot, sweep, knee, throw, etc. So again, collar tie, reverse collar tie. We need to see the feet for this one. So we have our guard up, right? Notice I'm blocking this one. This is the one coming down to my hip. Elbow in here, collar tie, right? Switch to a reverse collar tie, pivot, okay? 
one more time. Collar tie, reverse collar tie. We can also set up some hip throws, huchimata, etc. Right, again, collar tie, reverse collar tie, boom, knee. What else can we do? Let's do it on this side. So we have collar tie, reverse collar tie, three quarter Nelson, boom, and throw. But Ramsey, why don't we ever see this in Taekwondo? Well, for the very simple reason that Taekwondo guys don't grapple. They don't wrestle. But when you start to grapple, when you start to wrestle, you can start to see, wait a minute, this isn't actually meant to be striking at all. Nobody strikes by pulling a hand down to the hip. Here's another one. Let's say we're out here and we're kicking. Boom, and he kicks me. Why would I pull a hand to the hip here? Okay, if I catch his kick, I'm pulling him into me. Exactly the same way I would here. So, catch. And I pull as I push this arm out. Now, you wouldn't punch this way in a boxing match, but it was never intended for a boxing match. Okay. Again. So, there, I'm generating force by pulling him into me. And, yes, with this hand, at the same time while I'm... Um, executing the punch, pushing this way, causing a head-on collision. One more time. Catch. Okay. Jordan, you want to give that a try? Use your Taekwondo. Catch. And yes. And I can't emphasize enough. Pull. If you don't have a leg drag, here, kick. If you don't have the power of a leg drag, we don't have, we don't have the point of why we're pulling this arm back in the first place. Okay. So let's do, let's do a little sequence here. So we're out here grappling. I come in here, I grab this. I've got your hand here, Jordan. What are you gonna do about that? How about a low block? Yeah, use this hand. Like chop it, yeah, exactly. So I come in with my knife hand, boom. You got a low block, boom. Okay, what do I do? How about reverse collar tie? Reverse knife hand. Look at that, okay. Oh, what was that? You ever seen that before? The nukate strike? What is that? How about an arm drag? Okay. Or look at this. Wax on, wax off. Anyway, there is a lot going on in these forms that I wouldn't say it's forgotten, it's just it's just ignored. Why? Because how do you spar in Taekwondo? You try to kick the other guy and sometimes punch him and that's what you score points for and literally nothing else. What is penalized in a Taekwondo tournament? Grabbing, clinching, striking in the clinch, any of these techniques where we're using any of these forms in real life is penalized. So that's why we don't see it. It's not forgotten, it's just ignored. So basically what I'm telling you is if you want to learn Taekwondo, Shotokan, Gojuryu, Kung Fu, whatever. Learn how to wrestle first. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train. Oh wait, we're doing the Chinese bell. I always do this as a sign off. I, I don't want anybody who's new to the channel to think, wait, they don't do that in Taekwondo. Taekwondo is Korean. It's just we're in China, so I've been doing this for a very long time. So let's do a more Korean sign off there. Thanks for watching, get out there and train.